Hello everyone and welcome to Life Begins in 20. My name is Mark and today I have my top 10 cards for Cube from the upcoming Commander 2016 set for you. This list is made up from the 56 new cards from the set, which are legal in vintage and legacy formats also. There are a lot of great cards inside these Commander decks, which includes the reprints that would have a place in many cubes and they are pretty good value as well. I've personally never played Commander, but I'm really looking forward to all five of the decks arriving this week to open up for you on the channel and give them all a spin. There are certainly some cards in these decks I can't wait to put into my cube. So let's get stuck into the list so you can see which cards I feel are going to be great for cube. There were a few close cards for this number 10 slot, with this and Magus of the Will fighting it out, but I had to go with Deep Glow Skate. We have a 3-3 fish for 5 that has a doubling season effect when it enters the battlefield. The 3-3 body is pretty poor for the cost, but it means you only need to get 2-3 mana's worth of use out of the doubling season effect, with the most common use of it being doubling a planeswalker's loyalty counter to be worth it. There is the potential for a 4 mana planeswalker to plus 1 on the turn it comes in, and then on turn 5 this enters the battlefield and suddenly you're able to ultimate that planeswalker. This is potentially a little game breaking if the right scenario comes off, but there are also many other cards that would make great effect from this, especially abusing the enter the battlefield ability with flicker effects. The biggest positive from this card is mainly the surprise factor of it, as people won't be expecting your planeswalker to double in loyalty that quickly. At number 9 we have Crystalline Crawler. This is a very versatile card, as it has the potential to offer you, with the right mana base, a 5-5 five, five for 4, burst mana by removing all of its counters, mana fixing as it can be used for any colour, a creature that slowly grows into something big, or just a body to beat down on the opponent. This versatility is the reason for it being my pick, but if you don't have access to at least 3 colours of mana, it comes into play pretty weak for the cost. At number 8 we have Frenzied Fugue. This card has the potential of really helping you win the game. Just because of the ongoing nature of this card, where each turn it will take control of an opponent's card unless it's dealt with, is the reason why I've picked this, as one-offs of this mechanic are very situational. The biggest plus of this card is that it can also steal Planeswalkers. A well-timed steal of one and it's game over. This card may not be a standout in cube, but it is very interesting what I'm certainly looking forward to trying out. At number 7 we have Fairy Artisans, and this is a really interesting card design. Any creature your opponent makes, you get a disposable copy of. In any grindy game, this will be great value for yourself, and an inconvenience for your opponent to deal with. As you can only have one copy, there are ways to play around this, where your opponent can play a big creature followed by a little one. But with so many creatures in cube having enter the battlefield effects, playing them with this on the board isn't really an option. This card will need removing, or you need to be far enough ahead to win the game without playing any more creatures. Both are fairly easy to do, so I put this down as great card design. It has the possibility to be a 4 cost 2 2 flyer for parts of the game, which is really weak, but also the potential to make your opponent think twice before playing any creature. At number 6 we have Rayhan, Last of the Abzan. This 3 cost legendary creature comes onto the battlefield with 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it and gives all of your creatures modular. This card is vulnerable to mass removal and exile as this will stop his ability going off, but if you manage to have multiple creatures on the battlefield with plus 1 plus 1 counters on, he becomes a total nightmare. He is a pain for spot removal and ideally wants to be killed last, as you can't remove him without conceding a little value. There are a lot of cards which scale really well in these colours, especially Carrion Feeder, which will help you protect him against exile. This card may not be the best overall on its own, but when built around, it has the potential to be great. At number 5 we have Ash Barons. This card is very strong for its ability to be a near free inclusion of a shuffle effect, a land thinner, a fixer and a graveyard filler. When you don't need a specific colour mana, this is a great land to have, providing a colourless one for Eldrazi creatures. 
Having the versatility to land cycle to find yourself a colour you need is great. If you have the extra mana available, there is no real downside to this card, but early on, if you're struggling with mana, this will really be seen as a land that enters the battlefield tapped due to the one you need to pay to activate it. I like the card and it will have a home in my cube as it offers some great support features, but I can see it being left out for some other more straightforward options. At number 4 we have the Selfless Squire. This card could either sit in your hand and do nothing, or come in and make a huge impact. This situational card really offers you one of the biggest swings you could ask for with there being so many creatures in cube that hit hard very quickly. He wrecks attacks that include first and normal strike as you can probably get a good block out of him as well. Sometimes you may end up having to make him a 3-3, but most of the time you will have other answers to deal with these pesky little attackers. This card becomes a pain for players working out safe attacks. The card isn't amazing, but it is a great tool for flash, mid-range and control decks to keep aggressive decks, alpha strikes, surprise attacks and heavy hitters in check. At number 3 we have Bruce Tal, Boorish Herder, aka Bram from League of Legends, although this could be his brother. This card will provide a huge swing as long as you have something on the board to play into. Double strike and lifelink to a target creature you control when he enters the battlefield or attacks is really strong and the inclusion of lifelink makes it very low risk. Bruise is a must kill as he has an effect right away. He is massive on the tempo side of things, he may not give you card advantage but you will end up getting great value from him most of the time. At number 2 we have Benefactor's Draft. This is a very interesting card with lots of applications which adds to its playability with three little words. Draw a card. You can use it to apply pressure in an even or behind capacity without giving away card advantage, plus use it as a mana ramp in an elf or cradle style deck. You can also use it as a surprise for an opponent you are racing who will end up running into a wall of blockers. This card has the potential to be a game ending one, but even in its worst case scenario, drawing a card for two isn't awful, plus running some cheap creatures into a wall for card draw is never going to be bad. And for the number one slot we have Vile Smasher the Fierce. This multiplayer card scales really well for fewer opponents and so what we have ourselves here is a bomb. This is comparable to Jory N with very similar stats and abilities, but the main difference is that this is the first spell whereas Jory N is the second. Jory N is also card draw whereas this guy is player damage. These differences make them very different in how you want to use them. This is a creature your opponent will need to deal with straight away. If they kill it with an instant, fair enough. If they use a sorcery to do so, you have the opportunity to hit in for some damage before he disappears. And, if he remains unchecked, you will end up having your opponents dead in very short order. This card will end up being removed straight away more often than not, but there is the potential to even have your opponent killed on its very first trigger. So there we have my top 10 cards from the set for cube. While some of you may not agree with my choices, I'd love to know what you all would have picked as your top cards from the set for cube in the comment section below. If you think I've missed something truly awesome that will be an instant spot in my cube, please do let me know. If you would be interested in watching some videos on the channel of how I built my cube and what's in it, please also let me know in the comment section as well. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and share it as it's really helping my channel to grow. I'll be opening all five of the Commander decks this week, so hit that subscribe button if you'd like to be notified when these go online. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.